Hello and welcome to my channel. So I was browsing through the personal finance subreddit and I saw this person who really looked like they needed some financial help. So I'll briefly run through it for you to get you caught up. So this person is the only person in the family who makes money and they make $5,800 per month after taxes, which is pretty good. Uh, and also, so with their bills, are they pay a mortgage of $1,866. They have a roof loan of $156 per month. They have car insurance of $148. They have a credit card payment of at least $250 a month. It says they pay more, but $250 is what they said, so we'll have to go with it. Then they have a car payment of $588 per month. They have a solar panel loan payment of $126 per month. They have a window loan payment of $111 per month. They have a water system loan payment of $102 a month. Then they have internet bill, which is $75 a month. Home security, which is $67 a month. Light bill, which is $90. Water, which is $60. And their phone bill is $242. And they are asking for some help with budgeting because they seem to always run out of their money. So immediately when I look at this, I can tell that they make they make decent money. It's not bad. Now, I don't know what city they live in. If they live in, let's say, New York City or Los Angeles, then it might not be enough to live very well. But for most of the United States, $5,800 a month after taxes should be plenty to live off of. So the one thing I really noticed was that they seem to take a loan out on anything that's possible. So I made an Excel sheet going over everything that they do in the month of their bills. So here you can see that their take home pay is the 5800 and then in this section I did their loan. So they have seven different loans and one of which is a mortgage which shouldn't really go in with the rest of them. And then beyond that I extrapolated the interest rates that they are paying on each loan. So if you look over here you can see that their biggest problem is the credit card loan because they're paying 21 percent interest on that which adds up to $1,300 a year, just in interest paid, not even counting towards what's going towards the loan that they owe. Next, they have three loans, which is a car loan of 11%, which is a little high, and they pay $3,200 of interest in that. And then they have they have some rather unusual loans, it is the solar panel loan, the window loan, and the water system loan, as well as the roof loan, which, now I'm going to say the roof loan is not that bad. It is under 3% interest, so I can live with that. It's much lower than inflation at this point, so I don't think that's a big deal. However, the car loan, the window loan, and the water system loan are all bad. If you add all of his interest payments up together, it equals $7,200 per year. And this isn't even including the interest that he pays on his mortgage because he didn't mention that. So we could guess that the mortgage is probably about 4%, which would add a few thousand on to the interest paid per year. But if we're just counting the $7,200 that we know for sure, that's already over 10% of his monthly take-home pay. So he's just losing that instantly. What he really needs to do is stop taking out loans for anything. He just needs to save up and pay it. If he saves, you know, 5000 he shouldn't go to the luxury thing of 7000 He needs to really stick at 5000 Or for him, honestly, he needs to, he needs to get the budget versions because he's in, he's in trouble. Um, he has $100,000 of loans, not including his house, and he's making $70,000 a year, so he really needs to get a hold of this. Then if we look at his other bills that are not uh, loans, we have car insurance, internet, light bill, and water bill. All of those I think are fine. The home security, honestly, uh, I'm rather cheap, so I would get rid of it. But if, if you feel like you need a home security system, I guess you can keep that. And the one thing I did notice was his phone bill seemed high to me. So his, his phone bill is $242, and I'm assuming that's for the four people in his family. So... I think he could find a cheaper plan that is only $1,600, 16, <laughs> I think he could find a cheaper plan that is only $160 a month or so. Um, my guess is that he is paying his phones off through that plan as well. So that would add to the price. So I would sell the phones he has and get cheaper phones, or if he owns the phones, 
just find a cheaper plan. This uh, this leaves him with, he said, $1,400 a month after that, but I added it up and I got $2,000 a month after his bill, so I don't know where that money went, but I'm gonna assume it's, I'm gonna assume his number is right and I went wrong somehow. So he says it leaves $1,500 a month for groceries, gas, and activities. So with a family of four, I think he could get groceries for probably $500 a month. I think that's a very reasonable amount. And then it, depending on how far he has to drive, a gas could be another $500 a month, honestly, if he drives a lot and if he has uh, inefficient cars. So that would leave him with only $500. And, you know, kids like to do stuff. So he's really already living past his means. Then down here, you can see he says he blames gas station snacks, which I do not think are a major problem. I mean, let's say at the worst, he's spending $50 a week on gas station snacks. I mean, that's that's really not going to make a big difference. I think he just sees it and he thinks, oh, that's that's one thing I can easily stop, which is true. But it is not his major problem. However, I would stop it. Restaurants in fast food are a lot bigger of a problem especially with the family of four, because he could be spending twice as much on food as he has to if he could just make it at home. Or if he would just make something that I've been eating a lot of, like chicken and rice at home, it's super cheap. It costs like a dollar. <laughs> you get frozen chicken and rice and just make that. And it's not that bad. And then he says they do an activity of shopping. So I think this is a major problem as well. So I have never been into shopping. I've never really done it. I know it is up until last year, I think I had only bought clothes for myself once, and those were for work. So, so I guess I don't exactly relate to the shopping problem. I, I do relate to the fast food problem because, you know, I really enjoy fast food, so I, I feel him there. But as far as shopping, I think he should just cut it out completely. If he feels the real need to shop, I think he should go to Goodwill and shop there. You know, you could still get the same experience with cheaper stuff. Next he says we have some improvements to our house that we would like to do and that the house is going up in value and I think this is just an absolutely terrible idea. I mean he's already a hundred thousand dollars in non-mortgage debt. If he does improvements to his house I mean his I guarantee he's not gonna have the thirty to fifty thousand dollars cash that he's gonna need just just to pay off the renovations and it's not like they're going to sell the house right now, so it, the the improvements wouldn't do as well. If he did sell the house to capitalize on the value that they'd gotten from the renovation, then they'd have to buy a new house, which is also going to cost a lot in the inflated housing market that we live in right now. Also, I'm a big fan of those housing shows like on HGTV, and it seems like they always run into problems. So like... <laughs> It seems like they're going to renovate the kitchen and then they find out that the plumbing and electrical in the entire house is wrong and that they have to fix everything and it's extra $50,000. So I would just not look. Uh, it's better to not know than to run into a $50,000 problem that the contractor says they have to fix. So, <laughs> so if he was able to pay off all of these loans and had the extra $700 a month, I would advise him to put the money into the S&P 500, which over the past 50 years has averaged 11% uh, growth rate and then 7% adjusted for inflation. This might not sound like a lot of money, but if you look at this, which shows a chart of an investment growth rate, if you put in a 7% rate of return, which we can average out since it's been there for the past 50 years. So if he did the $300 bi-weekly, which fits the plan if he just stopped paying the interest he would have three hundred thirty nine thousand dollars after 20 years so 156 thousand of this would be from his contributions and 183 thousand would be from the interest earned so in review i've kind of gone over his problems but we should try to help him some if we can my advice would be one he needs a second job or his significant other needs to start working because they are way behind on everything. So the first thing I would advise him to do is to stop taking out loans on everything. Because even if he makes more money, if he just takes out more loans and owes more money, it's going to be in the same situation. The next thing I would advise is kind of be tight with all the random things. Like, I, you know, 
I did say the gas station snacks weren't a huge deal, but I would eliminate them because it's easy to do. I would eliminate all the restaurants and fast food, the shopping, and I would limit vacations to things that are like camping or something like that. I'd stay away from Disneyland and all that. Kids won't really know the big difference in between a $500 vacation and a $3,000 vacation. So I would just do something cheap, do something outside, go to the national park, You'll have fun, get some exercise, but you won't be messing up your financial future. Another tip I would have for him is I think he should either get another job or his significant other needs to get a job. If they could add another ten to $20,000 per year of income, they'd be able to get out of all these debts within the next two to three years if they're very dil diligent. Or at the very least, they could get rid of their credit card payment, uh, their window payment, their water system payment, and their roof payment. So that would leave their car payment and their solar panel payment, but they'd be in a lot better of a situation than they are now. So my last tip is that I think he should ask for a promotion. So a lot of people don't think about this, but a job is not going to give you a promotion, most likely, if you don't ask for it. And if they offer you a promotion, I would ask for more. Like if they offer you a 2% raise, ask for 3 or 4%. The worst they can do is say no. So there's no harm to getting paid more money for the exact same job that you do. So this person, they're in trouble. I think they're in more trouble than they realize they are. But it's not the end of the world. They are making almost $6,000 a month without their significant other working. So they have a good source of income. And I think if they just get more responsible, just... Be smart with your money and don't take out all these loans. I think they can get it together within the next few years. Also, last note, I don't see any mention of money going towards retirement. It doesn't mean he's not putting any money towards retirement, but everybody needs to put money towards retirement or else you're just going to work forever until you die. Everyone needs to plan for the future. If anybody else has any financial questions or anything like that, please message me and thanks for watching the video.